Hello and welcome to our morning prayer. I thought we'd do it outside in the garden today because it's so beautiful and so lovely and sunny. So let's take a few moments to still ourselves and recognise the presence of God. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God. To you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bring light and life to your creation. Pour out your Spirit on us today that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his way known to Moses and to his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, and in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 23 verse 13 to the end. So Balak said to him, Come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only part of them, and shall not see them all. Then curse them for me from there. So he took them to the field of Zopim, to the top of Pisgah. He built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, Stand here beside your burnt offerings while I meet the Lord over there. The Lord met Balaam, put a word into his mouth and said, Return to Balak, and this is what you shall say. When he came to him, he was standing beside his burnt offerings with the officials of Moab. Balak said to him, What has the Lord said? Then Balaam uttered this oracle, saying, Rise, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, O son of Zippor. God is not a human being that he should lie, or a mortal that he should change his mind. Has he promised and will he not do it? Has he spoken and will he not fulfil it? See, I received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot revoke it. He has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor has he seen trouble in Israel. The Lord their God is with them, acclaimed as a king among them, God who brings them out of Egypt, 
is like the horns of a wild ox for them. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, see what God has done. Look, a people rising up like lioness and rousing itself like a lion. It does not lie down until it has eaten the prey and drunk the blood of the slain. Then Balak said to Balaam, do not curse them at all and do not bless them at all. But Balaam answered Balak, did I not tell you whatever the Lord says, that is what I must do. So Balak said to Balaam, come now, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please you. Perhaps it will please God, sorry, that he may curse them for me from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor, which overlooks the wasteland. Balaam said to Balak, build me seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. So Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Here ends our first reading. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanlinesses. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 8, verses 16 to 25. No one after lighting a lamp, hides it under a jar, or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand, so that those who may see the light, that enter may see the light, for nothing is hidden that will not be disclosed, nor is anything secret that will not become known and come to light. Then pay attention to how you listen, for to those who have, more will be given, and from those who do not have, even what they have, seem to have will be taken away. Then his mother and his brothers came to him, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, wanting to see you. But he said to them, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing! And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed, and said to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the wind and the water, and they obey him. Here ends our second reading. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. the song of Christ's glory. 
At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. You can be going about your normal daily business when now and again something happens that causes you to think, to change your plans, or even perhaps change your whole outlook on life. For the disciples at the end of the Gospel reading today, this is what happened. A large percentage of them were fishermen. They knew the lake like the back of their hand. And there is no way they would have put out in a boat if they felt that there was going to be a storm. They knew that if the lake was whipped up into a storm, they could have all drowned, all hands lost at sea. Now I've never been to the Holy Land, but my best friend from Vicar School has. And while she was there, staying in a hotel opposite Lake Galilee, a storm was whipped up during the night. She said it was furious and scary. But by the morning, it was all calm and quiet again. It's not surprising then that the disciples were scared. This potential disaster was turned into the most amazing opportunity by Jesus. After being awoken to the sound of panic and worry, Jesus tells the weather off. Well, in fact, the word that he's used is rebuke. The dictionary definition of the word rebuke is an expression of sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of beliefs or actions. Jesus is criticizing the weather and treating it as a person, something he has control over because he is God. For this, for the disciples, this is a moment of revelation. This incident on Lake Galilee is a change of outlook for them. Not only now do they see Jesus as a teacher and a leader, but they are beginning to see him for who he truly is, God. Only God can command the weather. I wonder how in these strange times your outlook has changed, interrupted by moments like this. A moment where you thought that everything was packaged up neatly, everything planned, suddenly changes. These moments don't have to be earth shattering, they don't have to be big. They are often small events that set off a whole other process. A process that sets you thinking or acting differently. For me, I hope that this period of lockdown will enable us all to assess whether or not our lives pre-lockdown were actually what we wanted. Did the old way work? Or is it time to have a rethink? What worked? What didn't? Do we need to carry on with some of the new ways of being that we've learnt during this time of being physically distanced from each other? Will we appreciate that hug or that shake of hands in a different way when we can do it again? For disciples, their normal daily lives changed by a storm on the lake. For us, ours has changed by an invisible virus. I wonder what we'll take from this time forward into our new world. The disciples realised that Jesus was more than they thought. I wonder what we will cherish and treasure when this time is over. No matter what the answers are, 
I hope and pray that when the world recovers and begins to heal, that we, that we as Christians see the bigger picture, that God is in charge and we help others see that as well. Let us pray. Through Christ whose life lives to make intercession for us, let us pray to the Lord. Lift up our hearts to the heavenly places and inspire us to serve you as a royal priesthood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let all peoples acknowledge your kingdom and grant on earth the blessing of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send down upon us the gift of the Spirit and renew your church with power from on high. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May peace abound and righteousness flourish, that we may vanquish injustice and wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to proclaim the good news of salvation and grant us the needful gifts of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world for which Christ prays to the mercy and protection of God. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you for joining me no matter what time of the day it is that you're watching this. If you want to keep an eye out on our parish website, massandparishes.org, there's lots of things going on either by YouTube, by Zoom, or by telephone conference call that you can join in with. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless. Bye.